Alright guys, I'm back with my WWE Extreme Rules 2017 review, and I've got to say that this pay-per-view, it had some good matches. Now, I'm not going to bash the pay-per-view saying, oh, the Raw pay-per-view sucked, it wasn't that good. You know what, I enjoyed some of the matches we had on this card, and in my opinion, um, going into Great Balls of Fire, I'm not, I hate that name of that pay-per-view, and I'm not excited about going into that pay-per-view, but after last night, I think only the one reason that I'm excited for that pay-per-view is because Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe is going to happen for the WWE Universal title. That is right. But I'll talk about that later. Uh, but anyway, the first match of the night was a pre-show match where the Paul Cruz versus Kalisto. It was a good match to get the, uh, the crowd hyped. I thought that this was the great way to get the, until we get them hyped. And in my opinion, Kalisto got the way and it was kind of a shocker to me. It was like... Like, for a few weeks now, they've been building up for Paul Cruz because he's with Titus now, and it's a heel, or supposedly being a heel. And um, you're thinking he would get the win, but apparently he um, he hasn't, so, you know, a bit weird there. But yeah, that was a good start there. And then after that, we get to the main show, and he's, uh, Dean Ambrose defending his Intercontinental Championship against The Miz. Very good match here. I just thought that these two guys had a lot of good back and forth. And now, I said in the, pa in the past that Dean Ambrose and The Miz have haven't had that good haven't never had good matches together. I've never like really liked the Dean Ambrose and Miz match. But last night they really liked it. Now I don't that they really stepped it up. I don't know if that was because of the no DQ finish or what it was, but something changed last night and in my opinion basically the whole match was that Miz and Ambrose trying to qualify each other. And then at the end the ref well Maurice Neil gets attacked Neil gets to uh, uh, Ambrose Neil gets thrown Maurice into, um, yeah, Ambrose um, Neil gets thrown into Maurice, and then Maurice basically sla slaps Ambrose, so that means she gets kicked um, to the back. Then the Miz throws the, uh, then I think Ambrose or Miz throw, um, so I think yeah, Ambrose gets throws Miz into the ref, and then basically the ref is dazed and confused. Miz gets back up, hits him with a skull crushing finale, and Miz is your new and kind of champion finally. The IC titles off Dean Ambrose. At this point, I do not care about Dean Ambrose. Um, happy for the Miz. I wish that he would do like he would go upper in the card uh, because he's way better than the mid card division. Um, uh, the Miz is, and so is Dean Ambrose. But I think right now the best place for Dean Ambrose is the mid card division, in my opinion. Just that's how I feel. Then we had the drifter that cut the promos. Uh, basically, he was singing, putting down uh, Bo uh, Baltimore. Baltimore, and I thought that was a, um, I thought that was pretty cool. And then after that, we had Bailey vs. Alexa Blitz. Um, I thought that this was, and this was a decent match, but in my opinion, this whole feud has been basically, Alexa Blitz, she's been basically dominating this whole feud. Now, when you have a feud in professional wrestling, you're supposed to have the heel go, maybe go over one week, then you would have the baby face go over the next week. But in this feud, We've just had Alexa Blitz standing tall, like, okay, they, okay, Bailey did a bit of brawling and that was it. But apart from that, Bailey has been such a fucking flop in this view. Now, it's not her fault, this is WWE's booking. And, you know, they do fucking 50-50 booking and I don't like that. But yeah, stuff like that. And that horrible, this is my life segment, oh my god, Bailey segment, oh my just stuff like that I didn't like, and, um, yeah, um, I mean, I don't know where Bailey goes at this point, maybe, I think, obviously, Great Balls 5, she's gonna get that rematch, but, where does she go from here, like, I don't know, it's pointless, oh, and then we did have, um, Rich Swan and Sasha Banks versus, um, Alicia Fox and Noam Dar, it was a typical uh, Cruiserweight match, the Bay Faces go over, whatever, Austin Aries versus Neville, same old thing happened here, Neville retained, I don't know why Austin Aries is still in that cruiserweight division, I liked how they they did it for Wrestlemania, and you know, they you know made it like a big deal for Wrestlemania, but I thought after Wrestlemania, I thought, and I'm like, I think you're really still feuding for this fucking cruiserweight title, now Austin Aries, here's a guy that was a former Ring of Honor world champion, a former PWG world champion, a former TNA a multi-time TNA World Champion, and he's fucking in the Cruiserweight division in WWE. Now, I know they're not going to talk about his TNA run, but 
this guy can mix it up with the best. I mean, he, he is one of the top guys. He was one of the top guys in TNA for a couple of years. And, you know, if he gets a chance to be with the other guys, you know, the main event guys, then I just think he's going to tear it up with guys like um, Seth Rollins and Austin, not Austin, um, Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. I just think he's going to tear it up with those guys. And maybe, and Samoa Joe, I mean, him and Samoa Joe have history, so. Um, I will see Austin Aries like face the main event guys and maybe uh, Austin Aries and Brock Lesnar. Um, then after that we had a tag team match steel cage match. It was the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro. It was a good match. I enjoyed this match. I think any time that these four guys have a match, I think you just can get a good match anyway. And obviously Jeff Hardy did jump off, off the cage like I thought he would. Um, but you know what was goofy about this match was that Jeff Hardy was the first guy to exit the cage the cage, he left first, and then, um, they basically, the there was no rule set, but they said, basically, you, it looks like in a tornado tag, you've got to have, like, they're doing 2k, you got to have both wrestlers outside on the floor, now, that doesn't make any sense to me, like, couldn't Jeff win for his team, and then that means they win, I don't know, but it was just so goofy, and why did Jeff come back in the ring, uh, and I know he did help his brother, but, no, no logic there because they lost the match anyway. But yeah, I, I mean, for Shames and Cesaro, I am kind of digging their team now. I, I know I said um, a couple months ago, maybe six, nine months ago, that I wasn't digging Shames and Cesaro as a tag team. But I don't know. The last couple of weeks, they've kind of grown on me and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm glad that they're the tag team champions again. And uh, yeah, see what happens there. Um, Then we get the main event, and it's a fatal five of it. It's Balor. Wyatt, um, Roman Reigns, Rollins and Joe, and this was a fucking good match, the best match of the night, um, a lot of good chemistry, uh, Finn Balor though got the best crowd reaction there, like any time that Finn Balor was getting hurt or anything like that, Finn was like, no, boo, whatever, and then Roman Reigns obviously gets his Roman Reigns heat, and for all the people who say, you know, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of Roman Reigns uh, haters are going to like, oh, um, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, and Samoa Joe carried Roman Reigns through this match. How did they carry for this match? Because Roman Reigns, I know a lot of people don't want to admit this, but Roman Reigns is a good wrestler. And for all people who say that, oh, he sucks, he sucks. It's not the person who sucks. It's the Roman Reigns character. And that's Vince McMahon's fault, not Roman Reigns' fault. Roman Reigns tries pro to portray a baby face, but... And Vince isn't getting his wit, you know, Vince wants his way as a baby face, and it ain't working. So basically now, the fans are fucking booing this guy, and every time like, Roman does something, oh, Roman sucks, Roman ain't good at anything like that. Roman can put on good matches. Look at the match he had with AJ Styles last year. Look at the match he had with Daniel Bryan two years ago. Look at the match he's had with Seth Rollins. I mean, I don't think people forget that it takes two guys to, you know, dance with in a wrestling ring. It's not just one guy. So, for all the people who say that Roman Reigns isn't a good wrestler and stuff like that, well, go fuck yourself, because actually Roman Reigns is a good fucking wrestler. And I'm not defending Roman Reigns, I am not a WWE fanboy, Roman Reigns fan, or whatever. I'm a Roman Reigns fan, and I am just saying what I see, because I see money in this guy, and I see that he has got a lot of potential, if he's getting the right character. I mean, look at his character on NXT. You had him as the uh, khaki heel, um, you know, the khaki rich heel a couple of years ago. So why could, I mean, we, I saw that promo a couple of days ago, and I was thinking, man, if Roman Reigns could get like that on the main roster, a promo like that, and man, how much people would like Roman Reigns. But, you know, it is what it is. And then, when it was a good match, with Bray Wyatt and Samoa Joe team up on the Bay faces, and at the end, Joe and Bray Wyatt um, fight at the end anyway. Seth Rollins does a frog splash onto Bray Wyatt on the outside. And then at the end, it's Finn Balor and, and Roman Reigns. Basically, Balor goes for the coup de gras. Joe gets back up, puts him in the um, choke, and then, that, and then uh, Balor faints. And then that's um, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is your new number one contender for the Universal title. So it'll be Samoa Joe versus Barack Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire. And in my opinion, I hope that Samoa Joe gets booked up properly because I've said this before. I think that if you're going against Barack Lesnar, I mean, it just happened with Dean Ambrose, like he was when he was over. Now I know, I know Dean Ambrose. I know Samoa Joe isn't over like Dean Ambrose is, but 
he's got a loyal fan base, and, you know, if WWE, like, do a squash match with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar, then a lot of fans are going to be pissed, so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what sort of match they have, I don't know if it's going to be a normal one-on-one, -on -one or a street fight, or something like that, but I'm excited to see what it's going to be, so, um, that's it for my WWE Extreme Rules review, and I'll check you later.